Hey guys, welcome to DanQ8000's Best Playthroughs of 2010 series, where you, the viewer, gets to decide what playthrough, gameplay, or DLC was the best, in your opinion, of 2010. Alright, in this second video, I cover the games in the second quarter of 2010, which were games that I covered, and some that released, from the months of April to June. And so without further ado, let's just get right into them. So the first game I did cover was actually somewhat of a filler, a, a game that I kind of, you know, I had some downtime, I wasn't really prepping for any huge releases yet, and I just felt like doing a, a, a quick and, uh, well, and yet helpful playthrough, and that was of course uh, Portal. Now Portable was one of the best games of 2007 in my opinion. It was, it is a puzzle game, and even if you're not a fan of puzzles, the style of this puzzle game was enough to get you into it. I I thought the Portal, like I said, was one of the best games of that year. And the fact that Portal 2 is releasing in a few months, I just cannot wait for it. And it'll be interesting to see how they uh, move along from that. Now, Portal, my Portal walkthrough, I actually titled it as a walkthrough because pretty much that's what it was. I knew very much where I was going. I had played Portal many times. So unfortunately, it's more of a walkthrough. There's not as much of a comedic side where people say, I, you know, I, that's my best. But still, great, great game, great walkthrough. Vote it if you like it. For the very first DLC that I covered in 2010, was for my my probably my favorite game of 2010 which was Mass Effect 2 and that was the uh, Mass Effect 2 Kasumi Stolen Memory DLC. It wasn't the first DLC that was released for Mass Effect 2 but it was the first mission pack that actually gave you achievements and bonus uh, there was a bonus weapon I believe there was a bonus armor if I'm not mis no sorry there was a bonus suit so like casual or casual I don't want to say casual clothing but like ship wear and things like that, you unlock a tuxedo. And I gotta say, I love making my character look like, I don't know, as nice as it possibly can in, in video games. Because I'm all about the style. But that's not what this, this, this uh, playthrough is about. I think it was one of the best DLCs. It wasn't overly long, but the atmosphere is something that I loved to death. It was an amazing atmosphere. I loved the rich mansions with the great views and epic battles you know the secret undercover style stuff like where you're right in the dude's face but you're not trying to confront him yet just yet you're trying to go undercover and get what you need to and then eventually go like just fucking head on head on collision with him and make a great epic ending and the fact that you got to keep the suit and there was actually a little easter egg that i unfortunately never got a chance to cover and that was the mixing drinks where if you drank enough uh shepherd gets hammered and it was freaking hilarious. So uh, Kasumi was also a new uh, party member. She was the f it was the first DLC to increase the party, the amount of party members you could have. And um, this DLC didn't disappoint. Kasumi is a great party member with great skills, great, extremely fun storyline. Uh, definitely worth the price. It's Kasumi Stolen Memory, one of my favorite DLCs of the year. Vote it if you guys like this playthrough. So this next game I covered, I always knew I would do this. Ever since I got my PVR, I knew for a fact that I was going to play it. And that has to be another one of my most favorite games of all time, the sequel to Condemned Criminal Origins, Condemned 2 Bloodshot. It, it was just anything you'd want in another Condemned game, plus more. A atmospheres were amazing. Uh, the combat system was amazing. The storyline was amazing. Every single place you went to was unique, new weapons, new fighting styles, everything was fucking insanely awesome. And I love that game to death and it will always be one of my favorite games of all time. Now, uh, it, the thing that was so great about it was it took the simil similar elements 
as condemned one and just expanded on it. Made it way better. Like, it was ridiculous how much they made it better. And they had a multiplayer aspect as well, which was kind of odd-sided, to, to say the least. I mean, it's, it's a tough game to do multiplayer in. And let me, let me tell you, though, when it first came out in 2008, um, people were swarming the multiplayer in that game. Same with me. I was playing that for weeks, man. Weeks. I I beat every. I remember I got every achievement in uh, I think two weeks. It took me, and I continued to play the game months after. I I played through the single player game. I don't know how many times. Single player story. I played through so many times, and I just loved it so much that I had to do a walkthrough of it when I got my PVR and I started doing this. And today it is one of the not necessarily top viewed, but one of the top rated, mainly because it was one of the first walkthrough of Condemned 2 in HD where the person knows where he's going and also doesn't make it like a boring okay go into this door turn left grab that grab this no I made it more of a, a natural thing made some jokes got s let you guys enjoy the story made it for a great playthrough in my opinion but it's entirely up to you guys let me know what you think This next playthrough that I covered was actually, all like Portal, very unexpected. It was a game that I felt like I just wanted to play through and just do a playthrough at that time. I didn't have anything expected planned or anything like that. And I actually asked the fans what game uh, they wanted me to do a playthrough on. And it was probably the last time that I would do an older game that didn't just recently release. And that was uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And uh, I, I felt like I kind of had to cover this one. I mean, Modern Warfare 2 was a great, had a great single player and a great multiplayer. Well, up until a certain point when it just got stupid. But uh, the, the single player campaign was really fun. And I thought it would be interesting, since people have already seen it, that I would make more unique commentary on the game instead of focusing on what, to, you know, instead of showing people what the game was. So I tried to use my... Uh, finesse or pizzazz or whatever you want to say to make the playthrough more enjoyable instead of just saying oh hey yeah this is like watching just some random another playthrough that's been done before i tried to make it as unique as possible and I, i'd say it came out quite well so uh third game of this year was or sorry of second quarter was call of duty modern warfare 2 oh my god i'm just gonna All right, the next game of 2010 initially probably gave me my biggest boost into YouTube uh, popularity than any other game in existence to date, even up till now. And I have a, I am of course talking, talking about, I am stuttering here, it's crazy. I am talking about Red Dead Redemption. This game was extremely anticipated. It was in development for I don't know how many years and people wanted to see it. Now, I think what helped was that I was one of the first to put up a playthrough. Therefore, people watched it. They're like, hey, this guy's pretty funny and I like watching his videos. Eventually, I just started getting subscriber after subscriber after viewer and everyone started supporting me from there. I'd say a good chunk of my subscribers started watching my videos from Red Dead Redemption. And I don't blame them because I believe it was an amazing playthrough, an amazing game, it had some great moments. I felt there was some laughs, there was some things. That I, not only was the game great, but I made, I, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but from what people said, they were like, Dan, you made the game even better and you made me wanna buy it. So Red Dead Redemption definitely ha is a strong competitor in best playthroughs of 2010 for second quarter. I gotta, I mean, it's still anything can happen, but honestly, Red Dead Redemption might take it for this one. I am, it was that good. It's all up to you guys. Vote now. Let me know what you think. Alright, so the fifth game that I covered in the second quarter was uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. 
Now, I actually got to this game a little later, like actually I think a month later than when it came out. And that did kind of hurt me in the view in the view category. But this, I, I'd always wanted to do the game, but I never got a chance to go out and pick it up. I was having money issues and I just couldn't afford it at that time. But I ended up, di I ended, I did end up getting it. Now this playthrough, I, I had first played. I never played the game before. It was blind, and I had to play it and do the playthrough. It was a great game. I love Splinter Cell. However, I was a little disappointed with the way in the direction they took this game. I'm sure if you a lot of a lot of you agree because people are saying stealth games are dying, which I have to agree with. Unfortunately, stealth games are really dying. But at the same time, should we let them die? I don't think so. Splinter Cell Conviction did hold on to those mo to that a little bit, but because of that, it was not a, my favorite game. It could have been, but it wasn't for that fact. Now, I also did a co-op playthrough in the multiplayer, and I was joined by uh, Hubba Bubba Cola for that, and we did a dual commentary, and that was really fun. I had a great time with that, too. So I'm judging this one. You guys judge your video on both the, the single-player playthrough of mine and the co-op playthrough with Hubba Bubba Cola. Now, that's what I want to group this on, so vote on which on both of those together, and let me know what you think. All right, and wrapping up our for our final game, or in this case DLC that was covered in second quarter, was the Mass Effect 2 Overlord DLC. And this DLC was probably the first to join together elements of vehicle vehicular travel with the new Hammerhead uh, hovercraft and the a new element of DLC, which was, I, I'd like to say it kind of combined the two DLCs pr prior to it, so the Firewalker pack and the Kasumi Stolen Memory, so both were kind of combined in this one. Probably one of the longest DLCs of this uh, released in Mass Effect 2. Really fun because you'd have to travel from different stations to try and stop this uh, rogue VI that we they don't we you know we figure out later on. And you have to go to each station and shut them down and prevent them from doing anything stupid. Now this was uh, yeah sorry this was a, a unique DLC that brought a completely different aspect to it all and. Uh, I thought it was one of a really good DLC. It, it was since it had more, it probably beats Kasumi Stolen Memory Pack. Sorry, Kasumi Stolen Memory DLC in that measure. So if you're comparing it for value, it was a much better DLC. Great, it was a great game. I was really starting to get into, into playthroughs at this time, and I started taking things seriously from this point on. Once Red Dead Redemption hit, I took playthroughs very seriously, and I am very proud of this DLC playthrough. Let me know what you guys think. That's the final game of second quarter. So that wraps up second quarter 2010. Which was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below.